Hello everyone, welcome to this session. So in this session we're going to introduce a new topic in terms of solving systems of equations and that topic is LU decomposition. So up to this point you know how to solve systems of equations using for instance Gauss elimination and this is the naive Gauss elimination. Maybe you, there you have a systems of equation that you have a problem of maybe dividing by zero when you're creating the factor. So you can do partial pivoting. Also you know how to solve systems of equations using Gus Jordan. So in this lesson we're going to introduce a force technique in solving systems of equations. And so here's the matrix that I'll be dealing with, and it's a three by three matrix. The first thing I would do is I would create my augmented matrix and augmented uh, vectors basically made up of your coefficients. And here, like for instance, in the first uh, equation here, we have eight, four, and negative one. We have eight, four, and negative one. And here's negative two, five, and one, negative two, five, one, and so on. And here's 11, four, and seven for my uh, right-hand side. So from from the name LU decomposition, we're going to take matrix A and we're going to decompose it into L and into U. Now, what is matrix U? Well, matrix U is simply forward elimination of A. So you already know how to do that. We've done this with Gus Jordan and Gus uh, elimination. So if you forwardly eliminate A, you have U. So the question here is, what is L? Well, L is basically a matrix made up of the multipliers and the factors that you use to get U. What do I mean by that? So what is the factor or multiplier that I uh, used to get this zero? Well, it was negative 2 divided by 8, which is negative 0.25. And I'll have it in the same place at the zero, but in this matrix. And what about the factor that I used to get this zero, which basically is 2 divided by 8. And this is 0.25. And I place it corresponding here. And this is negative 0.33 is the factor that I use to get this zero. So basically, if it, so, the same information that you used, the same information that you would gain in Gus elimination if you do forward elimination, um, you would. Uh, this is the same information to create L and U. So I took matrix A, and I decomposed it into L and into U. And again, use the forward elimination of A, and L is made up of the multipliers, the three multipliers that I um, that I had to get those three zeros. Now, the second process in the LU decomposition, after I decompose into L and U, I'm going to take L, and I'm going to take this B, and I'm going to forward substitute to get D. And the reason it's called forward substitution, we introduced backward substitution in previous lessons, and we said it's called backward substitution is because we're, we're, we're getting x3, then x2, and x1. So in this case, forward substitution, we're going to be getting d1, d2, and d3. So look at this. If here this is B and this is B1. So from this, uh, if I use this matrix in this B1, that means D1 from this equation up here is just 11. And D2 is just going to be 4 minus uh, 0.25, or in this case, 4 plus 0.25 multiplied by the 11 that I got from D1. And this is going to be D2. So uh, very simple uh, algebra in, in solving these equations. And we ran through this um, in previous lessons. Um, now, in terms of D3, it's going to be 7 uh, minus 0.25 times uh, basically uh, D1, which is 11, uh, plus 0.33 times the D2, uh, 6.75, and it's going to give us 6.5. So I took L and this right-hand side, and I forward substituted these two, and I got the D vector, okay? And I got 11 point um, uh, 6.75 and 6.5. And after I'm done with the forward substitution, I'm going to take U combined with D and undergo backward substitution to get my solutions. And backward substitution here, you're going to find 6.5 uh, divided by 6.5. That's going to give us x3 of 1. And this is going to be uh, 6.75 minus 0.75 times the 1 that I got from the x3. That's still going to give us 1. And by combining these two in this uh, equation up here, I will get an x1 of also 1. So my solutions are 1, 1, and 1. So let's recap LU decomposition. So LU decomposition, I took matrix A and I decomposed it into L 
and into u. And l is just merely the multipliers that I used uh, or that I used yet yeah, to get those three zeros, and u is just merely the product of forward elimination. After I decomposed l and u, I took l, combined it with b, and undergone forward substitution to get the d vector, right? And I got d1 first, d2, d3, hence the name forward substitution. Now, after that, I will take u, combine it with the d that I got from here, and undergo backward substitution to get my solutions, okay? So let's actually look here. What is the one new thing in LU decomposition? Because decomposing L and U, you already know that. You already know how to do forward elimination. And if you kept track of the factors, which you should have have, you already know what L is. So decomposing into L and U is not new for you up to this point. What's new is the concept of forward substitution. And it's a simple concept, but it's new. So, and you already know what backward substitution was because Gus elimination was only made up of forward elimination backward substitution. So in terms of LU decomposition, the only new thing here is the concept of forward substitution. So actually, let's go into the code and see um, how this is going to work. And in this code, the only thing that really is added in it, as opposed to the Gus elimination code, for instance, is that little code of forward substitution. So uh, most of this technique, you already know most of the parts of it. So as with many of the programs that we did before, we had to create our empty arrays. And here we have A, which is a 3 by 3, and B, which is a vector of three elements. And we have L and U, right? So there are still 3 by 3 matrices. And we have D that we we're going to create here. And we have X, which is going to house our solutions. Now, I have not done this before. In previous lessons, we created a three by four matrix because we just took the augmented matrix A and B combined. But in this case, since we, we want them separate, since B is going to be used on its own and so on, I'm going to input, input them into separate entities, one in matrix A and one in vector B. And here's the nested loop that is gonna do this for me. So I'm going to say for i is equal to 1 to 3, so since we have three uh, rows, and I'm going to say for j is equal to 1 to 4, uh, because I have four columns. And I'm going to say if j is less than 4, in other words, if it's 1, 2, and 3, I want you to put everything in a. Else, in other words, it's um, equal to or greater than um, it's equal to or greater than 4, uh, we want it to put it in b. So this is what the code is going to do. And uh, as it's actually storing this in A, I want it, uh, whatever's in A, I want to put in U. Now, I'm doing this just for the sake of clarity. In the code, I can say that the forwardly eliminated A is U, or I can just use the uh, matrix U just for the sake of clarity. But you can just opt from using a U matrix altogether. But I'm just using this just for the sake of clarity. So I stored A, I stored uh, whatever's on here into A, and then I stored it back into U, and whatever's in here, I stored it into the vector B. Okay, so now I have inputted my values. So now we're going to decompose matrix A into matrices L and U. And here I have for k is equal to 1 to 3, so that's one change I did. So in other codes, it was just 1 uh, to 2, and I'm going to explain why I opted to 1 to 3. This is a normal forward elimination code uh, that I have here, just with slight changes. Now, you remember the factor is u, i, k, divided by u, k, k, so that does not change from the Gus elimination. And this is the same uh, code that we used in terms of Gus elimination, but the only difference is now we're using the matrix u. Uh, so here's the difference. So before I actually go back to, say, forward eliminate the third row, I want to store, I'm, I'm creating here my L uh, matrix. And say I here, I for K is equal to 1 is going to be 2. So I want L21, and L21 is basically this, uh, this address here. I want to store the factor. Right, and then when we go to the uh, second i, is going to be L three one. We're going to store the factor. So for that uh, elimination, I wanted to store it here. And when we go for K two, uh, the factor is going to be stored here. So we're doing the same thing as we did with Gus elimination. The only thing is, is basically I'm defining basically the a that I used to have here as u. 
and now um, making sure that I'm storing my factors in L. So that's one of the distinct changes that I want you to look at. And here uh, I'm also creating this diagonal in L um, that I have here. So the diagonal is basically L K K is equal to one. So when K is one, so L one one is equal to one. L two two is equal to one. L three three is equal to one. For instance, okay. So this is the reason why I did the K from one to three. Now from K one from K one is gonna uh, run through this loop, right? And it's gonna do L one one is equal to one. Then when K is equal to two, again it's gonna run this loop and say L22 two two is equal to one. But for K is equal to three, and I want to, if K is equal to three, that's four to three. That means this loop is not gonna run at all. And the only thing that is happening when K is equal to three is that I'm saying L33 three three is equal to one. So that's the reason why I upped this to K is equal to three, only to make sure that I have a one in this address here. So I want you to keep a, an eye on this. So again, so let's actually recap what are the changes that we made in this code previous to other codes. Here, I separated A from B, so in this input code. And here, the only difference here is I'm keeping uh, track of now my factors with this line of code, um, LIK is equal to the factor, and also uh, creating my diagonal in the L. So basically the only changes in the forward elimination code is basically those two. Okay, uh, so let's actually go into uh, forward substitution. Now, when you see here, forward substitution, we already knew that uh, D1 is equal to B1. So I can initialize that D1 is equal to B1. And this is analogous to what we did with the backward substitution. Remember with the backward substitution, we already know that the uh, this value is just this divided by that. And we did it as a line of code here. So this is kind of analogous to that. So I know that my D1 is equal to the B1. Now here's I is equal to two to three. And this is forward substitution, right? I got D1. So now uh, I is equal to two to three because now I'm getting D2 and D3. Uh, so now we're going to initialize the B as, say, B2. In this case, B2 is going to be equal to 4 here. And then we're going to say J is equal to 1 to I minus 1. So when I is 2, so that's from 1 to 1. So this is going to loop only once. And the reason it's going to loop only once is because I'm only wanting to subtract this, right? So I'm only wanting 4 minus minus 0.25 multiplied by 11, which is, say, uh, this is multiplied by D1. And then I'm just going to put whatever sum I get here into uh, D2 here. And when I go to the uh, final loop where basically I is 3, uh, this is the, we're going to say my sum is equal to B3, uh, which in this case is just uh, 7. And here is going to be J is equal to 1 to I minus 1, but I is 3, so this is going to loop twice. And the reason it's looping twice because it's subtracting this term and it's subtracting that term, okay? And after it's done with the sum, it's going to put it in D3, okay? So uh, let's actually go now to the backward substitution. I'm not going to spend a lot of time with this because we explained it in previous lessons. So the first thing that we do is we get the X3, and it's D3 divided by uh, U33, basically D3 divided by U33 here, 6.5 divided by 6.5. And here, again, since it's backward substitution, we got x3. Now we're going to be i is equal to 2 to 1, x2, the next one. And it's a very similar code uh, to the forward substitution. And we've went through this code before, but I want you to see that the only difference between this code and this code is not, not only that I'm dividing here by u33, but I want you to see how we're defining the i, because that is the main change uh, here. This I'm going from i is equal to 2 to 3. This is I'm going from i is equal to 2 to 1. This is j is equal to 1 to i minus 1. This is j is equal to i plus 1 to 3. Okay. Uh, but the sum code itself is very, is identical. So the only changes between these is how I define the um, 
basically the loops. And the fact that this here I divide by u33, and here I divide by uii. And the reason those are not here, because there's no need to divide by that since the diagonal is made up of ones. So uh, we can still do that, divided by lkk, but um, it's just we're dividing by one. So that's why we omit it from this code. So kind of recap what we learned in this lesson. So we introduced a new topic as LU decomposition. It went like this. We took an augmented matrix. We decomposed it into L and U. L is just the multipliers and the factors. And U is just the product of forward elimination. After we done that, we took L and this right-hand side. And we only got forward substitution to get D. After we got D, we combined it with U. And uh, going through backward substitution, we got the solutions. And we went through the code. We found that it there's very, very slight changes between an LU decomposition code and a Gauss elimination code. One is I separated both here. Uh, instead of just dealing with a 3 by 4 matrix, I did A as a 3 by 3 and B itself as a factor uh, or a vector on its own. Um, in terms of the forward elimination, the only reason is I up to the k to 3. Uh, we added this uh, code of L here and this code of L here. So those are the three changes in this particular code. Uh, this is an entirely new code, but we saw that it's it mirrors uh, it mirrors the backward substitution to some extent. We found that the only difference is how we define the loops. Forward is 2 to 3 since we're getting, in this case, d2, d3. And here is 2 to 1 since we're getting x2, x1. And um, also how we define j. And we said here we omit the divided by lkk and divided by lii since we the diagonal is made up of 1 and will be divided by 1 anyway. Now, in now, you might be wondering why would we go through this technique if it do, if Gauss elimination does the same exact thing? Well, breaking it, decomposing into L and U, and we're going to go through this in the next lesson, makes us uh, calculate a very important property in terms of matrices, and it's called inverse matrix. And you're going to see why decomposing uh, the matrix in this way gives us the ability to calculate this very important property. And I'm going to explain it more. Why is it important and and how to even calculate it. So we're going to go through LU decomposition uh, while generating A inverse. Uh, but this, this is it for this lesson, and I will see you in the next lesson.